So how much do you trust elections? Because I'm really feeling like I don't trust them all that much right now. Joining us is Representative William Timmons to talk about this and the Durham Report. Representative Timmons, welcome to the program. How are you, sir? Charlie, doing great. Good afternoon. Good to be with you. I mean, this has just been an absolutely explosive revelation. It's not like we didn't know. We, we knew that this is what happened, but it took years and years and years. And, and just we suffered through the lies from the media, from the lies from the left. And we finally have the smoking gun. Even CNN's Jake Tapper said that it exonerated Trump and was yeah. incredibly uh, detrimental to the credibility of the FBI and the criminal justice system. Like, it, this is an important day, and the media is trying to gloss over it. But it's also a, a day where a lot of Americans right now are thinking, why the hell should I go vote? Well, one, we cannot give up on our on our institutions. We need to protect wait, wait, them. Wait, no, no, uh, our I, institutions have given up on us. I mean, we just saw that with the FBI when they colluded with the Clinton campaign against Donald Trump. And we saw with the FBI or 51 intelligence agents that signed a letter saying that the, the, the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation. John Brennan said that was all political. Uh, and that was to help Joe Biden. So what's to stop them from doing this in the 2024 election? Well, number one, they would win. And that's unacceptable. If anything, it makes me more angry. It makes me more angry. And it gives me the playbook to stop this from happening again. Number one, we're going to hold hold them accountable for this outrageous behavior. But number two, we're going to make sure that the trust that the American people deserve to have in the next election exists. And I can give you the whole playbook for it. At the end of the day, the, the Dems are going to continue to use the courts and bureaucrats to try to uh, change uh, election laws and the manner in which we, co we uh, conduct elections up until the last second. They're going to try to go after President Trump. They're actually, they're tacking away from using uh, election law changes. Now they're trying to use the, ju the judicial system in uh, New, New York and in Georgia to create this, this cloud of uncertainty it's just absolutely absurd. But we cannot let them win. We cannot not vote. And uh, I have extreme confidence in most of our election system, but we need to hold the states accountable that are engaging in bad action. But wait a minute. I mean, you, you just said they have, they are, they've, uh, Trump's been indicted in Manhattan. Trump's going to be in that, in, indicted in the state of New York. He's going to be indicted in Georgia. Where are the indictments against Comey? Where are the indictments against um, uh, everybody that was involved against, against Peter Stroke, Lisa Page, uh, Andrew McCabe? Where, where are all those indictments? How come we don't get to see indictments? Because we don't control the levers of government that will allow that. The federal government is, is controlled by the Democrats at this point. The Department of Justice is completely uh, politicize what we are going to do though what we are going to do is we are going to defund the fbi we are going to create uh checks and balances using funding and i can promise you that's going to happen we talked about it today in the republican conference uh chairman jim jordan is planning on a, a way to use dollars use funding to hold uh, the fbi accountable and i'll give you one other thing and i have been pushing this for a few days now uh, adam schiff needs to be at the very least censured he spent 40 plus hours mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of this uh, talking about how he, as the chairman of Intel, had all of this, uh, you know, secret uh, intelligence that this was all real. And he was just lying. He was just lying. And he demeaned our institutions. He reduced the American public's confidence in, in, in Congress. And it, it's just, it is unacceptable. So I am doing everything I can to push a censure resolution at the very least. Well, I, let's not forget Nancy Pelosi. Let's not forget uh, Mad Maxine Waters. Let's not forget Chuck Schumer. Let's not. I mean, there's a lot of Democrats out there that are absolutely uh, up for censure. But again, I mean, I'm just I'm not seeing on, on one hand, you say we're going to do something. But then on the other hand, you say we don't have the power to indict. Why don't so we have the, the power to indict? That's not what Congress does. That's the well, they sure as hell did the, it under uh, Trump. The Department of Justice. They did it under Trump. Papadopoulos went to jail. Uh, General Flynn went to jail. Uh, Jerome Corsi, they tried to get him. Roger Stone went to jail. All because no, of know, this big lie. 
we don't control the Department of Justice. We don't have a Republican appointed attorney general. Not that that should matter. It shouldn't matter who appoints the attorney general. But the people that are currently in power do not believe in the rule of law. They believe in the politicization of law, which is the problem. So, again, we're going to retake the White House. But until then, the only way that we can file charges against anybody is that a state attorney general or uh, a local DA has jurisdiction. And I have been looking. I am not aware of any situation where Hunter Biden was in Texas or Florida or South Carolina and was smoking crack with prostitutes. So like, if I can find that, we can create a case to file charges. That's what the Democrats would do. So at the end of the day, we need to focus where we can, which is to hold uh, the Department of Justice and the FBI accountable. And we need to create uh, the, the levers of accountability which is what we're doing right now. And this was a huge step in the right direction because uh, the FBI has a reckoning coming and we're going to take a pound of flesh because of their transgressions. But again, we can't file any charges federally because the, 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 the people running the Department of Justice and the FBI are partisan hacks. Can you not open an investigation? What's see, OK, again. That's the thing. We can't do anything because they control power. But if you put us back in power, then we'll get something done. I, 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 I am literally afraid that Donald John Trump was the last Republican president we're ever going to see. Well, uh, this president's driving us into a global recession of World War Three. I can assure you that uh, President Trump is going to prevail in this next election. But uh, again, Charlie, we can only do what we can from Congress, from the House. We have gavels. We have subpoena power. This is a huge step in the right direction. We have to hold them accountable. We have to we have power of the purse. We can direct funding. We can do a lot of things in that regard. But uh, we do not have any ability to indict at the federal level because DOJ and the FBI, clearly, they've clearly been politicized. So, so um, whether, open up a hearing, get these people to testify. When they lie, get them for contempt of Congress and demand the Department of Justice send them to jail. Um, we can try that, but what's going to happen is uh, they're going to wait uh, for as long as possible until they act. On it. And again, I mean, they have politicized the Justice Department. They have they have undermined the rule of law in this country. And we are less safe because of it, and we are less prosperous because of it. So we need to focus on uh, the things that we can control and make sure that we are in a position to show the American people that the, the individuals that they have elected uh, in the executive branch have violated the core tenets uh, of our constitutional republic and have undermined uh, the will of the people at every turn. Trump did not get four years in office. He was undermined by the FBI. He was undermined by, by the Department of Justice. And it was a witch hunt. And he's still being pursued. He's still being pursued, whether it's this ridiculous civil case where this woman alleges something happened 27 years ago, whether it's this ridiculous issue with the NDA with uh, the district attorney in Manhattan. I mean, yeah. they're going to stop at nothing. And we need to continue to fight to hold them accountable and show the American people that the policies from the left are destroying this country. And the only path back is to get this country moving in the right direction. So question, how much faith do you have in the FBI right now? So they're going to be reeling. They're going to have a magnifying glass on them. I think there's a lot of good people there, but they were not a part of this. I'd like to think that with all law enforcement, you know, 90, 90 plus percent of them are, are well-intentioned, good, good citizens that are doing their best to protect uh, our way of life. But the people that were in these positions were, were poisoned. They were poisoned with a hatred of Trump. They were poisoned with a belief that they were doing something that was more important than the law, which, I mean, they lost their way. OK, OK. So, so with that, knowing that the seventh floor of the FBI those people were poisoned. Does it give you pause to think that maybe some of these indictments that they had against those people on January the 6th, maybe those were trumped up charges as well? Oh, there's no question about it. As, as we're looking at um, the 
hundreds of millions of dollars of damage that was done by rioters uh, the summer before January 6th. And then I have more questions than answers about what actually happened on January 6th. So, yeah, there is a ton of political persecution, prosecution across the board. But the the left wants to keep talking about um, the election. And they have actually gotten people to stop believing that there's a legitimate uh, claim against the underlying problem. The underlying problem is that the Democrats in Washington, Eric Holder and his minions, intentionally and systematically uh, changed election laws unconstitutionally in concert with a number of get out the vote groups, they, they, they are the ones that created the problem. And Trump simplified it to stop the steal. But at the end of the day, it's extremely complicated. It's an extremely complicated situation. And they knew what they were doing. And they hoodwinked the American people. And they uh, weren't held accountable. So we need to have lawyers able to hold them accountable. Uh, I, I don't know if you know this, but the only state that got to the Supreme Court in the last presidential election it was on this the one. merits. Yeah. On the merits was South Carolina. Was South Carolina. So uh we didn't get to the Supreme Court in Arizona, in uh Georgia, in Pennsylvania. And it's because of the way that they timed it and the manner in which those those changes were fought. But at the end of the day, the media has gone off the off the deep end. And every time they talk about the uh, challenges to the election challenges to the outcome of the election, challenge to the manner in which the election occurred. They always talk about this uh, fake election fraud, this, uh, this ludicrous a- assertion that uh, there was cheating. And they've gotten away with it. They've gotten away with it because they control the media and they are able to, to do this. But this is the beginning, what I hope is the end. So the fact we- that they spent four years talking about President Trump colluding with Russia, and we now have a conclusive. Uh, CNN just said that Trump was exonerated. That's the I know, end of that I know. Question. Yeah, but but uh, so uh, they said they they themselves meddled in our own election. The FBI, they meddled in our election in 2016. They meddled and they blamed Russia. They meddled in our election in 2020, and they blamed Russia. That leaves me to think that the FBI has really been blaming Russia for a lot of things that they are doing. And maybe it was in some way designed to get us into a war with Russia. Let's let's not go there. I want to I go two more. We can go right there in a second. But it's worse than that because it was in collusion with the media. It was in collusion with uh, the social media companies. It was in collusion with Twitter. We have we have documented evidence that the uh, the FBI was working with Twitter to suppress information sure. that was legitimate. So I mean, it's not just the the election law changes. It's not just the manner in which uh, the FBI conducted itself dishonorably and lied to the American people. It's not just the way that the Democrats in Congress lied to the American people. It's all of this. So I mean, you're looking into the question of whether it was designed to get us into a war with Russia, I think it was designed to get to regain the executive branch because Trump was undoing what people refer to as the deep state. I mean, I think that's the goal. I think that I think that all of this is a result of what is essentially an entrenched bureaucracy pushing back on what they view as the role of government, what they view as progress. Yeah, we got a clean house. Representative William Timmons, got to leave it there. I appreciate your call this afternoon. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Thank you for having me on. Look forward to next time. We'll be right back. This is the Charlie James Show, News Talk 98.9 WORD, the voice of the Carolinas.